Question one starts by telling that hadrons are made of quarks. And the first part of the question says, what property defines a hadron? Well, it would be far too easy if the answer to that was about quarks, so it isn't being made of quarks that actually defines a hadron. To find the actual definition, you need to look in your notes, look in your booklets, look in your books, or even look in the back of your textbook in the glossary. In the back of your textbook, there's a glossary, and it tells you there what is meant by a hadron. So that's the definition of a hadron. Next part asks you for the quark structure of a baryon. The question's told you that hadrons are made of quarks. The question is, when it says the quark structure, how many quarks make a baryon? And the next part's going to be how many quarks make a meson. So you should know that. The only way to know that is to have learnt it. If you were stuck in the exam, you could always look at the, the table where it, tell, it tells you about quarks, it tells you their baryon number. And if you know that to make a baryon, you've got to have a baryon number of one, that might help you to work out how many quarks there are. Part B, one similarity and one difference between a particle and its antiparticle. So the similarity is something you should have learnt. I'm not going to tell you here. Again, it's in your notes, it's in your textbook. The difference, so checking out what the mark scheme says, it's always easy to talk about what the difference is if the particle is a charged particle. But as a general rule, what do you say? that would apply to uncharged particles as well as charged particles. And the actual thing that the Mark scheme says is that the antiparticle has a quantum state that's opposite from the particle. If that's good enough for the Mark scheme, it should be good enough for your answer. So we know what the similarity is. The difference is that the charge or an other quantum state is opposite. Part C, fill in the properties of the antiproton. And that's for charge in coulombs. So it's not wanting just as a number, a relative charge, it's wanting the charge in coulombs. And hopefully you know what sort of charge a proton's got, so you know that an antiproton's got the opposite sort. If you don't know the amount, you need to get your data sheet. And the data sheet doesn't tell you the charge of, of a proton, but it does tell you the charge on an electron. So if you know how the charge on a proton compares with the charge on an electron, and then how the charge on an antiproton com compares with the charge on a proton, you should be able to get that one filled in. And similarly, the, you should know what the baryon number is of an antiparticle and you should be able to work out the quark structure. Part D is about a K- particle. If you're not familiar with a K- particle, it doesn't matter because the question says it's a meson with a strange of minus one. And it says that it decays in the following way. It asks you to state with a reason what interaction is responsible for this decay. And when it says what interaction, it means is it the strong interaction, is it the weak interaction, is it the electromagnetic interaction? We see in the decay that there's this particle with the mu sign, it's actually called a muon. If you're a bit rusty about what that is, Look at the data sheet, and we see that it's there on the data sheet as a lepton. So we've got a meson that's made of quarks decaying to give a lepton that isn't made of quarks, and then the, the antineutrino as well. So we've got quarks sort of decaying, stopping being quarks. And there's only one interaction that's involved whenever quarks either change into a different sort of quark, or in this case, stop being quark. There's one interaction that is responsible for that, which you ought to know. We also know that the, the K is a strange particle. The muon, because it's a lepton, isn't strange. And there's, there's one interaction that we know in which strangeness isn't conserved. Unfortunately, it's the same interaction as the one we've just described for quarks changing. So you should be able to work out what that interaction is and give you a reason for it. And then the last bit, two properties other than energy and momentum that are conserved in this decay. And we've come across loads of questions like that. It always says properties other than energy and momentum. And you've got three to choose from. Always remember, never give mass as one of the answers. Because energy and mass are the same thing. So when it says energy is conserved, it means energy mm -hmm. including mm -hmm. mass are conserved. Mm -hmm. But there are three other things for you to check while I go and answer this text message.